and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a chicken. If it thinks so, okay. Okay, we are now live. We're now live. Hi. Hi, everybody. This is International Art Alliance and Palimpsest Project, and we're here live as we are on this famous channel, and we are here together, four of us. We might have some of our other members uh, coming online with us pretty soon. My name is Ross Berman. I'm in Los Angeles. And today we also have Lara Spedetto, who's coming to us from the United Kingdom. Denise, I'm going to mess your name up. Huizman Builder, did I say it right? You're perfect. Ah, <laughs> Honestly, coming. after such a long time in the, in, the, in like abroad, I don't even notice anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't expect anybody to be able to pronounce my name like a Dutch person would. Especially because you're coming through all these different countries where people are going to have a different accent. Exactly. And, <laughs> and you're in Montreal. And Stephanie McLean is in Toronto. And Rose Williams has just joined us from Vancouver, British Columbia. And uh, we all have different styles, different outlooks. And now we are fast and famous friends with the Palimpsest Project. We're sending our works across the world for each one of us to work on and collaborate. And sometimes our collaborations are easy and sometimes it's a little bit more challenging to figure out what we're gonna do with them. But we've really had a great time. I think I can speak for all of us in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, before we go any further, we have a couple of, uh, gee, I guess, announcements that um, there's a show coming up from Denise in Toronto. Yes, that's correct. It's a solo I have show? two shows coming up. I two have, shows. Um, yeah, I, I'm doing the interior design show uh, in at the end of September, the third week of September in Vancouver. So I'll be finally meeting Rose in person in, oh, in a couple of weeks, exciting. which is really exciting. And then after that, the first week of October, on October 6th, my solo exhibition opens at the Latitude 44 Gallery in Toronto, which is really exciting as well. Ah, a woman on fire. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> and then Stephanie, you had mentioned that you, you and Denise are getting together for lunch. Lunch and a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Lunch and a podcast. <laughs> what? What's that about? So we've been invited to uh, appear on the Auntie Lynette Show, which is a podcast um, hosted by Lynette Ware, who is uh, well now she lives in Toronto, but she's originally from New York City, and she played. She's a thing. She's an actress. She played Hesh's wife on The Sopranos. She's beautiful. She's hilarious. She's got great energy. So it should be a lot of fun. And we're gonna. We're going to pump the uh, Palimpsest project. Pump it up, pump it yeah. up. Oh, yeah, because the show's cool. all about uh, how artists connect and how uh, um, artists that work together make the city, city more vibrant. That's right. Yeah. So uh, we're going to be talking all about us, like the, the group. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, great. <laughs> Get us some uh, more people to, to watch our show. Yeah. Um, and, and something has happened in the news today, which I'm uh, I was a little remiss to mention, but four of our beloved members here are in Commonwealth Nations and beloved Queen Elizabeth II, mm -hmm. Her Royal Highness, has passed away mm -hmm. today. Yeah, it's sad. Really yeah. the end like of my a daughter's... serious era. But... Yeah, she yeah. really is the, the, the marker for the era, isn't yeah. she? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. she represented something that's past that we no longer have. And I, I used to watch her every Christmas day with my grandmother. Mm. She was a monarchist. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. Well, aside from the pageantry, um, maybe maybe there's still pageantry to look forward to if if uh, the Commonwealth decides to, if the United Kingdom decides to go along on, on that front instead of the national front, as you might say. Can, I, I just wanted to mention something as well um, oh, yes, before we dive in. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge um, the tragedy and the loss at the James Smith Cree Nation in Canada. Um, a lot of people died and some people are still in the hospital. And uh, it, the whole event is linked to substance abuse disorder and tragedy and suffering and trauma in the community. And I just want to acknowledge 
and say my condolences to everybody who's suffering right now. Thank you, Rose. Thank you for mentioning that. The beautiful, beautiful mention. Really sad. Yeah. It is very sad, yeah. Are we not going to have Cheryl today? Um, we pink her. She hasn't answered her wake-up call. Be... I don't know what's going on. Sleeping, okay. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> well, we'll let her sleep. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure whether she is home or whether she's at her mom's place. Uh, oh, so, yeah, she might be in between. So that's in between. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so we we'll, we'll hope she will join us. That Cheryl is in the process of um, being a caregiver for some her seniors in her life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really want to acknowledge her for that because it's mm. it's not easy. It's not easy. No, no, no. I've been there. I know. <laughs> I think we have a very thoughtful kind of program today, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so a lot uh, across the world, there's a lot of heaviness in our hearts. I think, and that's one of the reasons I think why we're artists, so we can express and experience that stuff without just, you know, carrying it all the time. Yeah. You know, we have a place to bring it. So um, if anybody's out there, if you want to, you know, make some more art, we've got these fantastic teachers <laughs> on this panel here today <laughs> who can really help you to bring it in a different kind of different kind of way. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about our getting getting together today and I know we could do an unveiling. Mm, um, <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm really much more interested in some in some questions that I have for each of us because our processes are so different and um and then in the kind of time that we're living in how our processes might have changed um mm -hmm. and also in our personal lives like how you mentioned that cheryl's process might change because now she's becoming a caregiver and her i'll have to repeat this if she ever comes on um mm -hmm. <laughs> but how her her motto of love where you live um you know how does that change in her life now that she's going to be doing something different in a different location that maybe she has some heaviness around, possibly. I mean, she's mentioned a couple of things, so I think there might be some some other kind of things. And Laura, you moved from uh, an entirely different country and your life had changed and you're, you're doing business, I think, in a different language. Your children are going to a different language school. And even though you say sometimes that your English is not good, your English really is very, very good. And, um, I like I wonder how how is it for you? I don't I don't know if it's been over a year that you've been in the UK from Italy, but how has it been for you with these changes and how have you seen your process change at all? Uh, my, my painting is always changing because I, no, I moved here uh, six years ago and I've lived up two years in Abu Dhabi. So also there I, my painting changed because, uh, you know, in in a Muslim country, you cannot paint um, figures so it's uh, so to participate to the exhibition i think probably in that uh, season i enter also in the abstract because it's better to paint abstract and before in barcelona also my figure were more dramatic than now and so yeah it was a uh, Probably because my kids were ch uh, were little, so <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was so hard. It wasn't and, the Spanish uh, influence so much as your children being dramatic themselves. Yeah, no, probably <laughs> was my my. You know, I, I was in my forties, so it's a change uh, in your uh, life, and uh, probably I I felt this this changing, and so in many I. Um, in a painting uh, it's called the, the screen uh, and there is a person screaming in the, another one i was uh, like this in another one like uh, thai so it was very different so yeah uh, i think that we change uh, uh during yeah the, the life life uh, happen and contribute uh, make us also change our, our style or not style because probably there is always a like a, a line between yeah. all the periods but um 
but we change every day so also our painting mm. probably change uh, mm. what about your palette do you think your colors have changed my palette uh in the first uh, um i uh, in my past uh, i i started uh, painting all, all uh, black and white just uh, using like pencil or carbon then i passed through like uh, more dark colors and then in when i was in barcelona red purple blue and then soft um like pastel and and now i like bold colors but i think they are more uh they have more joy not joy is balance <laughs> the balance yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's uh, what i am uh, I feel I'm looking for, mm. or and, and harmony, and harmony. harmony. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, yeah, the color are uh, yeah are influenced very much. <laughs> Every painting. Yeah. Oh, That's interesting. Thank you, Laura. It, so that also puts me in mind. I don't know who to ask first, Denise or Rose. I think I'll go with Rose first because seasons are changing and your work is you know like all about taking something that's natural from the outdoors and transforming that into color and you know by i don't know what kind of magic you actually use it's completely alchemical <laughs> and that really comes through in your work how do you find that the season changing will then influence what you do especially i wonder during winter <laughs> the short answer <laughs> the, the leaves the leaves that i use the bark everything is different in the spring in the summer and in the fall mm. i happen to personally really enjoy some of the more bright um light green colors that i can get and the less tannin that i get in the spring when they're young so i have a freezer full <laughs> <laughs> they, they, I, I moved my studio around and they got moved and they're a little bit, but I'm going to um, rely on them containing the less tannin that they had in the spring. Now, in this season, I am like a squirrel. <laughs> uh, literally, I am doing exactly what the squirrels do when they're like, oh, acorns, <gasps> walnuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I have. laughs> now, desperately, because I need to have something through the winter. <laughs> so um, I literally, like uh, where I'm living, there's so many walnut trees. They're they're kind of like a pest or a weed or something, and they're dropping those green hulled walnuts everywhere, and that's a beautiful source of dye. And I, I take a couple and I leave the rest for the squirrels and everybody else. Um, the acorns, you take the cap and you leave the nut for the animals because it's the cap that has the color. Oh. So oh. There, there, there's a lot of stuff that I start doing at this time. Oh, yay! <laughs> Cheryl. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, you're muted. You're you're muted, muted Cheryl. Cheryl. Mute. We can't. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to laugh. We can't, we still can't hear you, you Cheryl. Take hear. yourself off mute. You're muted. We can't hear you. <laughs> Take yourself off mute. Got it. There you go. <laughs> Hi. All we saw was. <laughs> oh, I could hear all these noises in my dream. Because <laughs> I woke up and then I fell back to sleep. <laughs> anyway, what so time is it there, Cheryl? Uh, 5.30. No. 5.30. So, yeah. you know what? You look fresh. I know. No, I just woke up. I seriously just sort of got out. I went like, oh, shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <It's okay>. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I'm sorry. Well, it's so good oh, to see you. It is um, nice to Rose see you, Sarah. Rose is filling us in with mm -hmm. um, how her process changes, doesn't change, what she does 
differently when her season when the seasons change how she sources materials and what she goes after i've got a good question for you too when it's your turn Oh, yeah. I'll just finish up quickly. Um, yeah. I start doing a lot more in this season because it's just like uh, the abundance of material at this time and they start to fall on their own. And that's what I've been waiting for. I don't want to take the leaves, too many leaves off the trees when they're doing their thing. Especially this year, we had so much um, drought, you know, dry and heat that they were struggling, you know? So a lot of them are curled up and not doing very well. So I leave them until they start to drop. Um, uh, uh, somebody close by has a catalpa tree. And it, if you look it up, they have really big, beautiful heart-shaped leaves. Mm -hmm. And I've just been watching and like, <laughs> like eight, three were on the ground. So they're in my freezer. So <laughs> that's what I do. I start to do a lot more. And then in the winter, I have them in my freezer and I have some dried and uh, I try to use them. And I've also made a lot of dye during this season from goldenrod and the acorn caps. So in the winter, that's when I start using the dye blankets more. Mm. Oh, so you really have it covered for every season. You, you're, you're in tune with how to make your your work sing with that season. I try. It's a, and it's a, it's an obsession. So I mm. really <laughs> try to make sure I have material all the time. Right. Can I ask a question? Are you work do, do you oh, ever yeah, mistake? Sure. Do you ever mistake those leaves for anything else? Like if you're cooking, do you go in there and like, oh, here's the basil, <laughs> and oh no, it tastes like catalpa tree. No. <laughs> I don't. But the rest of the family. <laughs> That's right. I can see that. It's not their favorite thing. Let's just put it that way. And I'm looking to get myself one of those little deep freezes to just dedicate. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you store them in Tupperware or? I store, them, store them in freezer bags. Freezer bags. Oh, that way they can stay really flat. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh. I think we got to have a studio visit one day, your studio and... The pogo really... sticks that got stuck in there made them a little bit funky, but anyways. <laughs> yeah, at least a pogo visit. visit. <laughs> that went right over me. I, I don't really understand what you just okay. said. I think I get free, it. Frozen <laughs> pogo sticks. Yeah, they, they got mixed in with the leaves by the family. <laughs> oh. They don't stay flat when they mix stuff in there. I see. Oh, okay. I, I actually, a lesson. I keep my palette and my brushes in the freezer. Yeah, that's good apparently for oil paint. I keep my acrylic paint in the <laughs> fridge, my palette in the fridge. I do. Does yeah. anyone ever mess with your paint when they're going in the freezer? <laughs> it's my fridge. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of like, oh my God, everything, paint, you know, of course, I'm thinking, oh, how do I clean that? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Cheryl, since since you did show up and since you're feeling like you want to you want to talk a little, I've got a I've got a question for you, and I think you'll be able to answer this right off the top of your head without really thinking about it, because your motto, I'll call it a motto, is love where you live, and and now you've told us, I think it was last week or the week before, that your 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 role is changing and you have to travel between these two points from your home to um to your mom's house, and that um you know maybe maybe going back to back home to our parents house is not the place that we really love anymore so <laughs> how how do you reconcile that in your art practice and what's inspiring you in the travel to go from one point to another oh that's um oh it's always it, it's it's just tough it, it really is it's it's just tough i sometimes i i leave it at lunchtime uh, about one o'clock here so the nicest part is, is, is that the particular road where I go through at the end always has some really nice big sort of shadows towards the sunset. That's always nice, just watching the sun go down. So I really like that. The best part of my mum's house is really is just her garden, is her crazy garden. Mm -hmm. However, um, the problem is, is 
I suppose that I actually did an exhibition about my mother's garden and they were in drought, like you were saying, Rose. The whole place was and this whole garden was dying. And mum was um, using her washing water and her dish, her laundry water, and she was actually bailing it out and feeding this garden. And that's when I did this other exhibition of how my mother's garden was dying. Well, the whole town was. But in a lot of ways, it was kind of like a bit of a metaphor for my mother and that life that she had was also changing. So it was sort of dying also. Mm. So I, I don't know. I try not to think too much about... I, I often try not to sort of go too far in the past. I, I try and always sort of like stay in the future if that helps for me. That's what... I, yeah, mm. so I always sort of look at... I try to look at what I'm doing, not... Um, not not the things in the past because I find that that just tangles with my head and it ties me down <laughs> I think that's true just, it, it does if yeah. We, yeah if we just focus on worry stuff that's, yeah exactly worry exactly. it's worry yeah it's um should have could have would have I don't know whatever it's, done. it's almost like yeah. yeah 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 I always go to cakes baked you know the cakes baked and that's what's made me what I am and whatever and, and let's go forward does, does that help any However, it's not really, um, it's not great because I spend three or four days with mum. Then I come back and the idea is gone. I go, what was I on about? Where was I up to? <laughs> so you're not keeping a sketchbook during, during this time in your travels and stuff? My mother just talks constantly. So she has to almost like control the narrative. And um, I'm, I'm um, so she just talks to me. So if I get something out, she'll go, what are you doing there? <laughs> and I go, yeah, I, 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 I do try to do that with her. But what she does is, is because, and also she's, um, she's 89. And so she's, so she has dementia and stuff like that. So, yeah. So what I, what I tend to do is when I'm up there with her, I go around, I visit all of her old friends and we go out and we do stuff. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. we, we just do stuff or I take for drives things like that mm -hmm. I don't know anyway so it's just um and so I and, and, and then I feel like the total glooms on my head because I would she has opportunities to change her lifestyle but she doesn't want to and so therefore you don't know you don't you don't really know how to manage these people so I'm watching this long goodbye and I'm feeling guilty but I've decided that I'm not going to feel guilty because there are opportunities that she had to be different in her life but she hasn't right. does that help yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, can totally relate to what you're saying yeah, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, to get over this feeling of her as 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 she's, you know, falling down, and and she will probably end up having a fall, and and something will sort of happen, and that. But you know, I'm I'm um, can't waste. I don't have a lot of time left. <laughs> Me also, yeah. I don't have a lot of time left. I can't waste this. I can't waste my time. Mm. Also. Um, and, and she has made her choices. I don't know. Does that help? This sounds rather, rather. No. And you're, you're talking about that thing where we, we, to recognize what we can change and what we can't. Yeah. And yeah. let that go. Then that's what you're talking, you know, you're yeah. Yeah. recognizing it and you're letting it go because consciously, you know, like we're not in our spring. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, spring has passed. Yeah. <laughs> but as Rose had said, the colors that you can press out of the autumn are really good colors. Yes, that's true. That's, that's very true. true, Ross. That's true. <laughs> and Denise, you you're you've almost got this opposite kind of problem in a, in a sense. Well, I mean, you're traveling for your your upcoming show and the podcast mm. and your, your other upcoming show. <laughs> Incredible. And three three years, I guess it's been where you haven't traveled after having traveled so much over, gee, I don't know how long has it been, 10, 20 years or something that you've gone around the yeah. world? Yeah, that's so how, how has How has the this staying at home, this pandemic-y kind of situation, how has that changed your process and the things that you're interested in creating? Well, it's interesting because for me, it hasn't been three years because uh, I was in Japan 
when the pandemic started and in japan the <sighs> pandemic never really got to a point where everything was locked down oh, right. so um we were not allowed to travel um outside of the country really because we wouldn't have been able to get back in but we were still able like restaurants were still open because many people in japan don't have a kitchen so they couldn't really close the restaurants so we were still able to go out see friends uh things were like more masked and it was a little less but we still went on on weekend trips and and drove around the country and and did day trips and stuff and then when we moved uh we were initially we had thought well we fly from japan to canada so we'll stop over in fiji and hawaii because we can break up the trip and that would be really cool well that mm. obviously didn't happen mm. but instead we chose to uh spend a week in the southern islands of japan where it's like really nice and warm and we could do scuba, scuba diving so we still had like a vacation while everybody else was locked away and it was weird because we were basically the only people and on the islands many things were closed so there were many things that we couldn't do and we were about the only people in the hotel <laughs> but we were nice. still able to go scuba diving and and enjoy the, the warmth and and see some new scenery and and drive around the the island and and uh so for all intents and purposes our life changed when we entered canada in july 2020 that's when we were had to stay inside for like two weeks like completely uh because of course we were entering the country, oh, so you had so to stay in isolation allowed. when you first entered the country. full isolation so that was kind of um not so awesome because we didn't have our stuff you, you you enter with like two suitcases half of which was diving equipment because we just went on a trip <laughs> <laughs> so that is super not useful if you're in the middle of montreal in a basement apartment <laughs> You're like two suitcases are filled with like your BCD and your stuff, and you're like, yeah, <laughs> not helpful. <laughs> but we had a book and some TV, and and we we got through it. And then since then, yeah, I guess 2021 was a little bit of a a downer because we were supposed to like do all these shows, and and um, I was really mm -hmm. excited mm -hmm. uh, about tra moving to a country where I knew the rules mm -hmm. again. Mm. Uh, mm. and then i moved to canada and i came here and all the rules have changed uh, yeah. so that was not so great <laughs> but it by the time our stuff arrived i had i mean we had 400 boxes to unpack i had my studio to 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 re like settle and i basically spent the year painting and and um painting the country that i really missed painting all my experience from Japan because for me I, I think because it was such a stark difference between the two um, I had a really hard time uh, adjusting and um, that was sort of it for me it felt like all the magic had left the world because in oh. Japan everything is is sort of um, you walk down the street and all of a sudden there's like uh, moss covered statues or or like these these wonderful like unexpected things that you would never see here and this was the first time for me moving back to a country that i actually knew and so it felt it felt kind of like i was stepping backwards in time and i was doing a step back instead of forward hmm. so i i mm. had to struggle with that a lot mm. i uh i think meeting you guys and doing the course is actually what helped me like snap out of that mm. and uh, mm. and and yeah uh finding inspiration to to move forward and and uh, and create again mm. so yeah. well that's good to know that we've had that kind of <laughs> yeah. connection yes. in your life in that way aside from you know the, the more obvious connection yeah for yeah. sure yeah no it definitely helped like just the fact that um i had something to concentrate on um other than uh feeling that my complete world had changed and i couldn't go mm -hmm. anywhere because that was the other thing i hadn't seen my family in because we didn't travel like we were there were some issues what which caused us not to travel to holland in the last like year and a half that we were in japan mm. so by the time like 2021 came around it was like about three years that i hadn't seen my family mm. and if you're in a pandemic situation where you're not sure like how everybody's doing yeah. and 
like if everybody was still healthy and you hear so many stories so that that sort of uh didn't feel great yeah um mm. but yeah. we got through it yeah mm. <laughs> yeah i did that too and i finally got to see my dad this year this summer and it yeah. was such a relief yeah that's nice because yeah. my dad is 87 so mm -hmm. um, i was very worried about him but uh, i'm blessed because my father is still in very good health and uh, we had a great time good good <laughs> me continue to grow stronger yes uh, yeah i'd like to mention before we go that uh, i'm also doing something interesting i just connected with um a fellow Trini artist, and we are going to do a collaboration uh, that's going to be part of uh, Caribbean Festival in October. Oh so, boy, where's, where's awesome. the festival? That is so cool. Where's the festival going to be? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Somewhere in Vancouver. <laughs> in, in Vancouver. That's, I meant mean, the general part of the world. <laughs> We're just throwing it together. <laughs> how great! That sounds Aww. so exciting. Do, yeah. How are we? How are we on time? Do we have time to talk to Stephanie? I don't know. It's 101. I, uh, or 401 yeah. or whatever, <laughs> 601 whatever a.m. I think Lara um, has a pretty, pretty uh, tight deadline. So Lara, if you have to drop out, that's uh, that's OK. No, uh, today I already. OK, yeah. you thank you. I think next I, week. <laughs> I think I extended yeah. our time by thank a little you. bit. So I think we're good. So go okay. for it. Okay. So Stephanie, so you're working on in a new series or a new yeah. perspective that's like really huge. Yeah, I know. And I was wondering if you could talk some about like where you're, how you're bringing all that together into a single canvas, these gigantic ideas. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> so, so I had the idea after about a year and a half or so of painting portraits of musicians, um, I thought, okay, I, I kind of want to do something else now <laughs> and so I thought about it for quite a bit and thought what am I into what what motivates me what inspires me and I thought um are we getting feedback sorry I'm hearing a little bit of feedback okay um anyway okay I thought what inspires me and it's really um anything to do with energy like the exchange of energy karma all of that stuff so anything that falls under the umbrella of universal energy so it's basically everything right and I thought well let's zero in on something that really that really has to do with energy and I thought well astrology and because it's, it's all about the positioning of the stars and uh, the effect of mm -hmm. the of, of the positioning of the stars when you're born uh, the effect on your life it's kind of like the blueprint of your life they say and it's all you know it's not obviously we know it's not set in stone and it's not it's not science so to speak uh, but it's interesting uh, nonetheless excuse me. because the moon the moon moves all the water on this planet so, so there's a lot yeah well, there we go there's science no but it's true so i'm saying that because a lot of people dismiss it i actually i, I believe in it but not to the point where like i make decisions based on it kind of thing however so i, I do find that it uh, it has a lot of relevance in today's society um so i decided to take on the task of portraying astrological signs through my paintings and decided to kind of work from the bigger picture um, down. So I painted a portrait of a woman um, who represents water. So she represents the element of water. And she, I'm looking, I keep looking over there because she's over there. But um, she's basically, a, she's like a jellyfish swimming up to the, swimming up to the surface and there are jellyfish all around her. So that's the water oh. sign painting. The other one is a fire sign painting. I call her fiery redhead. Uh, it's a woman with red hair that's kind of flowing. And at the end of the flow are these sparks that are flying out. And now I'm working on the element of earth, which is here. <laughs> and you can't really see her face because it's not really painted in yet. But <laughs> anyway, so this is obviously a big work in progress. This is going to be washed back a bit so that the focus can be more on her face. And um, yeah, we'll see where this goes. Hopefully I can wrap it up on time for uh, a show I have coming up next Friday. I want to be done with this next Wednesday so I can prep everything else for the show on the Thursday. Is it a collage? Is it? It's a collage, yeah. So it is, these are, okay. it's, it's a collage. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to see. It's, it's, Where's the show? The show is in Toronto. It's um, the Art Walk in the Square at Don Mills and Lawrence 
from September 16th to the 18th. Mm. 16th. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Soon. Very soon. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> how, how is astrology influencing your getting the painting done? Oh, man. I don't know. I have to look up procrastination to see what sign. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't we all? I don't know that it is helping me or hindering. I have no idea. But now I'm I'm in. I'm going in for it. That's yeah. what I'm, 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 I'm on the whatever. I'm, I'm inspired to move forward is what I was trying to say. It looks extraordinary. Oh, thanks. Fabulous. Yes. And isn't it Thank interesting you. that Rose has these sort of similar-ish colors? On, yeah. on, is it the easel behind your rose, or That's is that something cute. you're working on? Now? Yeah, I, I did. I, I'm. Uh, uh, yeah, I did something different. I, uh, I did a sun print of the leaves with some um, raw pigment. Wow. On panel. Whoa. Yeah. So uh, I'm exploring something different because I usually use paper or, or fabric. So um, uh, yeah, I'm using the wood directly and uh, and the sun. Wait, that's oh. printed directly on wood. Yeah. Yeah, it's wood panel. Oh my gosh. How did you use Yeah, I was not kidding when I said alchemy. That's just How did I use the sun? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I throw the pigments on there with water and I lay the leaves down and then uh, I have to protect it from the wind, which is a bit funky, but anyways. <laughs> um, and then uh, I leave it for the sun to dry it. And cool. the sun kind of does like makes an imprint of the leaves into the pigment. Oh, cool. No Very cool. <laughs> it's fun. I'm doing something mm. different, guys. Magical. Mm. Magical. Yeah. That's awesome. Ah. And Cheryl, you just had a show recently, too, didn't you? Yeah. Is, is your show still going on? No, 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 no. That's done. And, and now I'm thinking, hmm, what's next? <laughs> what's next? <laughs> yeah. Are you moving okay. on from the meeting? That's question. <laughs> No, because when I when I hung them, I I realized that when I hung them, they were on the four foot ones or the 122 centimeter vertical. I noticed that when I hung them, when I looked at them on my easel, I had my eye level here. And then when they were hung, they were hung higher. And then I became fascinated with the concept of where my eye level was. You know, and how you look down and you see all of this and then when how you look and how you look across. And so I thought, ah, oh, this is really interesting because when I paint, I pretty much paint real life size so that um, um, if I'm painting um, like mandarins or onions, they're actually life size. So if I paint people, I really try to make everything life size. So if I do a coffee cup, I try to make it life size. And so I really, I noticed that and that was, that was really interesting. And then I thought, I've really got to investigate well, it's like when you look out, out to see where your eye level is. Yeah, it's perspective. And so I thought I'm going to have to be more mindful of that. <laughs> like like you're, dig you're diving deep into where Monet was. Ah, yeah. So anyway, that's, that's what I was sort of thinking about. Really? Yeah. Look, at, look at Monet's stuff yeah, and you'll see yeah. he was doing the same thing. Yeah. Okay. He was going up at the bridge and then he was going down, down. low. Yeah. And then he was going like that. You'll see, he was doing this. Yes. Ah, yeah. interesting. Yeah, cool. because it, it's, I don't know, it, it almost like helps us to express where we're coming from, where our yeah. perspective is. Yeah, because a lot of times um, when you stand in front of the painting, you're standing in the same spot where the artist stood. And a lot of times that is a really interesting thing to do um, because like, um, like Stephanie was talking about, well, energy, but it's even that same experience that that artist had. Well, sorry, when they painted it, standing where they painted it. And even if it was a landscape, plein air, standing there painting it, there's the landscape. And then when you come along, you're coming straight into that same experience. I mean, that's always that very famous Caravaggio, you know, with the John the, you know, Solomon and the, the Baptist's head yeah and she's got it on the head and she's going like that and it's almost like oh my god she's handing it to me yeah <laughs> oh, do i really want that <laughs> yeah yeah and it and it, it affects the impact in photography yeah. it's very crucial you if you do this or you yeah. do this it's a co completely different mm -hmm. perspective mm -hmm. denise does that in her work she does like this and this uh -huh. with the uh with the transfers 
Yeah. Yep. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting, um, yeah. So anyway, so I'm thinking, so that's where I'm, I don't know. Um, that's where you're exploring. So, yeah, I've been thinking a lot about that because I, I remember when they were hung, it was just, it was almost like, I don't stand there. They were hung. <laughs> How interesting. Because, you know, it was almost like, oh, yeah. So the next, the next show, make sure you have a step ladder. <laughs> bring, it, bring it to the show so that people can go up on the step ladder and just experience the different level. Yeah, yeah, and then when they buy the painting, you always have to tell them they always have to like put it low. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is where the eye level is. Like, you know, you're looking, this is where the eye level, I know. Yeah. That makes me wonder, Laura, how, I've seen some of your portraits before, they're, they have been very, very large. Is that typically how big you will make a portrait? Mm, no, I have also a small portrait, but I like, I prefer to paint big. Uh, I like also to paint with different panels. Uh, I've made a diff um, not portrait with different. No, I've made also portrait with different panels to add like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, but in the next series, probably there will be more. So it becomes a very big. It, um, I started with the panels just because uh, I when I I was painting in Abu Dhabi, I had a big space, and and so I oh. Yeah. Almost finished, and so it's a kind of way to um, think to send big uh, paintings, but in a small having a yeah. Oh, that's, that's smart. Yeah. 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 Neat. Yeah. yeah there's, a, there's a Canadian yeah. artist that does that. Jay Lovelace. He's doing very very well internationally, but he also does that. He has the different panels that make up the whole painting, but also kind of work on their own. So yeah. it, it's, yeah. it, it's fascinating. I made, a, I made a painting, um, I made just one, but it, it was funny because uh, it was abstract. It was like a, a four, a no, like trees uh, are six panels and you can create a square painting, a long painting mm. or a horizontal painting mm. and uh, yeah. They work all together. There, there are numbers that you have to move, and uh, it was very funny to, to do it. I have in my um, living room now. It's a very I put a long, but it was funny because I, I, um, I made all the calculations. So I said to my daughter, "Maths uh, is important, also for an artist, because you have to calculate <laughs> all the area." So. <laughs> I love so it works different ways. How interesting. So it's almost like a tile. You know how you can often turn. Yeah, yeah that's hmm. cool. Fabric print. Continuous. <laughs> how about Ross? Mm. We, we about need to Ross. ask you a question. Yeah. How did your paintings change, or paintings, artwork, I should say, change over the pandemic? Or how do you find they are, what influences a change in your artwork? Let's see. So part of the change has been the, the how I've approached the concept. So I started doing a more cartoon type of series. And so that changed how I did them oh. materially too. Like I would use a brush and ink. Um, so before I moved into this studio, so I moved into the studio at the beginning of the pandemic, uh. I had to do everything really, really small because I had such a small space to work in. And I had no place to put anything. And so everything was like super freaking tiny and I couldn't really develop anything. So now it's like I've got like lots of things in development at different stages. And um, I mean, you guys know how this goes. It's like some of my completely overwork and some of them uh, like I just can't mm -hmm. show them. And some of them are like, mm -hmm. well, those colors are really screwed up now and I'll have to paint that part over again or I'll just scrap things entirely. Um, but um, I have I have like a six pieces in in this one area where I'm drawing and painting because I have a big I'm so fortunate I've got a really big space here um, and and I just keep them up all the time because they're telling me something I don't even know what they're about you know they're just like there's something there there's something conceptual they're not high things at all they're just like I, I don't even know what they're about they're like mm -hmm. organic planty kind of things and. Uh, a weird palette I've never used. I mean, it's like a completely different thing. So I think that all of that is coming out of having been so close, closed up for such a long time. Interesting. 
huh. where my and also my space isn't shared right now so mm -hmm. i can just kind of go to town right. i don't have to wonder like well somebody's going to see this in the middle and I, like i just hate that <laughs> i hate showing in the middle of things you know it feels like but that's mm. the exciting part I, I, and i do the same thing i let them talk to me and tell me what they need oh yes oh that's beautiful yeah do you guys do that too you let your paintings talk to you you hear mm. them say things Shake, yeah, yes. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sometimes. Yeah. My yeah. my uh, process that happens to me earlier in the process where yeah. I still do my competition. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, because that's, you're that's you've more, got a, a really yeah. difficult technical thing yeah. that you're accomplishing in order to make your yeah. your work happen, right? So mm. by the time it's on my easel, it's pretty set where it's going. Although I do occasionally change some colors around or yeah. decide to take stuff away that I put in initially. I just painted away a, a set of stairs that were there initially. And I was like, yep, yeah, we're going to lose those. <laughs> yeah. that feel? That's why I like to Very mix good. the botanical print and the painting because the botanical print sort of is like a mono print that you're not sure what's going to happen. And then you're, you mm -hmm. have it. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. it talks to me and tells me what it needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. we have uh, very little time left yeah, on the, on the call. Probably about three or four minutes left. Six, three or yeah. four minutes. So I so, think uh, we should round this up. We should round this up. So what do I say? I say thank you for joining <laughs> us yes. today. Our mostly Commonwealth, what is it, like 90% Commonwealth <laughs> countries uh, in the world. <laughs> we are, aren't we? We're Australian and Can Canadian. Yeah. yeah. yeah but we in the UK. In the UK. But we, yeah. But remember, yeah. we're, we're a penal col colony. Just remember that. Yeah. You have to be a special <laughs> certain person. Oh, and Trinidad was a slave colony. What, sorry? Trinidad was a slave colony, but it's also part of the Commonwealth. Yeah. <laughs> we were all, you know, that's that's our um, <laughs> background. But she, she represented a certain time, a certain era, and it's past. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thanks for joining us i think we had a really interesting conversation today oh, yes. yeah. to meet with you all today oh, wow. however yeah. yes ross however. next week we do really want to talk about that painting that you ah, just yeah <laughs> over there. i, I know where i left it this time it. it's not like i forgot and that's why i skipped it it was like i just had so many questions and i really <laughs> wanted to hear what everybody had to say about their, their wonderful work so next week same time um don't make me do math in my head <laughs> yeah. Twelve thirty Pacific, three thirty Eastern. Yeah. Eastern, yeah. Yep. Eastern. I don't know what it is in Toronto Midwestern time or in Australia. It's also tomorrow. Eastern. Also Eastern. In the UK, it's eight or eleven hours ahead of six me. Six hours, I, have no I think. Right. Six yeah. hours from you. Or five hours ahead. Sorry. Just what? check our Facebook pages. Check our Facebook pages. We're international. <laughs> international. <laughs> Skip all the time zones. Yeah. yeah. Get Greenwich on. We'll just okay. be on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if you miss us, you can watch the replay. Watch and the replay. If you have questions, we will answer them next time because uh, it's hard to look at and do it at the same time. Thanks, guys. Yes. Yeah, Thanks we hope everyone. you enjoyed your time with us today. We hope to see you again. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Thank you. guys. <laughs> okay. Let's press this end live video.